and I don't know if it's recording. Oh, it says stop recording, so I'm assuming. Yeah. Oh, it's recording. Top left. I think it's going. It's recording. All right, I can do your quick introduction, and then we'll bring you on, Carlos, for your. Okay. All right. Over here. All right. Hold up. <laughs> Get over here. <laughs> Whoa. All right. Cool. You all see my screen? Great. All right. Welcome everybody to the Elementor Marketing Meetup. I am Mike Scampini, and uh, I'm one of the co-organizers here for our new Elementor Marketing Regional Meetup. And the other organizer is Carlos. You'll hear from him in a minute. Before we get to that, uh, just want to welcome everybody. This is going to be one hour long. So I don't know if you're able to put your video on in this. We'll, we'll learn. We'll learn here as we all get this bevy going. Um, but you can hit us up in the chat. We are going to take some time to do some Q&A. But just note that this is being recorded. So just keep that in mind as you go through. If you are able to go on video, your face might be on YouTube. So just keep that in mind. All right, today we are going to go over how to build a lead generation funnel with Carlos. And I wanna do a quick introduction of Carlos for those of you that don't know him. Carlos is the owner of Miami Marketer and Automation Gorillas. He started his di digital marketing career in 2003 with a prank phone call to Fidel Castro. Maybe we'll have time to go through that today, maybe not, but it's an interesting story. I've heard it, it's awesome. Uh, this experience led him to build a digital marketing campaign for companies like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Disney, Universal Studio, and more. Now he runs an agency which specializes in building funnels and automation for small to medium-sized businesses. He's also a U.S. Marine combat veteran, so thank you, Carlos, for your service. Uh, Carlos is going to have a lot of gold nuggets here for you, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen and pass it over to him. So please welcome Carlos, everybody. Virtual round of applause. Thank you, man. What an intro. It's like it's as if I wrote it myself, man. Awesome. <laughs> awesome intro. <laughs> All right, man. Good to go. Thanks, Mike. Um, Mike and I, we um, – well, thank you, Shivam. Lucas, thank you. All those digital claps. All right. Good to go. Good to go. All right. Have you guys uh, attended one of my meetups before? Have you guys? Um, wait, hold on. There's a Q and A. No, there's a no. There's no poll feature here. All right. So if you've attended one of my meetups before, uh, pr give me a one in the chat. And if not, press two in the chat. So just so I can kind of get a feel for the crowd. All right. So yeah, Mike, I, I think I recognize you, Steve. Yeah. Uh, good to go. Awesome. Awesome. All right, cool. So there's like a nice little mix. And then if, if there's anything I've learned about these other communities, I would say Elementor has one of the most active communities I've ever been a part of. And I know more people are going to start coming in um, because they're just trying, they're probably just figuring out, Hey, this is not on meetup. This is not on zoom. They're trying to figure out how to get in here. So once they get in here, I'm sure we're going to kick it all off. But uh, I mean, we're going to kick it off regardless, but I'm just saying that I do expect more people to show up because Elementor is very active and engaged group. So, um, yeah, I, I did start my career in 2003 with a prank call to Fidel Castro. I'll give you the quick crash course about that. Um, I'm a, I'm a Marine. And when I first left the Marines, I've always been a geek in digital. I've always built my own Linux machines. I learned how to build my own websites by right clicking, um, uh, right clicking a website, view source, pasting it in notepad, and then um, what I I would just learn how the code all worked out. In the Marine Corps, I went in as an ammunition technician. They got a whiff of me becoming, knowing more about computers. And then they said, hey, you know what? We need you to help us with the computers as well. So I got a secondary job. And now fast forward to 2003 when I first um, got out of the Marine Corps from my first tour. And I had two good friends of mine. They were radio show jo uh, jocks on 95.7 FM in Miami. And these guys were infamous for prank calling, prank calling a bunch of people. Um, so one of the prank calls that they did was um, to um, the president of Argentina at the time, um, and it was it was cool, but no one really cared too much. It was just it was just cool the fact that we got you know to a, a president or some type of political figure. Um, when I left the Marines, I told them, "Hey guys, let me just build your website. Let me just run the website. Let me have some fun with it. I'll do it for free." Um, I'm, I'm collecting unemployment anyways after the Marines. So, you know, it, it, it'll be fun. They said, sure. In return, I got access to concerts. I got to meet a ton of celebrities. I get to go on whatever trips they had. It was, it was, a, it was a ball. It was great. So one of the things we ended up doing was every time we had a prank call, I would go ahead and upload the, the audio so people can hear it on the site. And then went ahead and we ended up prank calling Hugo Chavez. Hugo Chavez was a was a really good one because over here in Miami we have a lot of Venezuelans. So it was 
it, it, it was a, it was a nice, it was a nice, um, um, it was nice. It was newsworthy information. And then we said, you know what? We know Hugo Chavez and Fidel Castro, they're best friends. Let's go ahead and use the audio bites from Hugo Chavez's call and let's use that to try to get to Fidel Castro. Well, we ended up going up the chain of command. We started off at City Hall. We went all the way to the dictator himself and he gave us a very colorful name on the air. And then um, what ended up happening was that because in Miami, we're, we're like a, a majority at that time was a lot of Cuban Americans and a lot of Cubans that, that came over from Cuba. That was like an attack that we were able to accomplish against the dictator. So we became basically like Miami based heroes. And then because of that call, we ended up making the news worldwide. My dog just jumped off the desk. Uh, we make, we made the, the news worldwide. We were on a, a Fox news, CNN, BBC, we were all over the place. And then because of this prank call, I ended up building my first funnel where it was the most successful funnel where you put your name and email address into the system. You went ahead, you, 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 you would get access to the call you in a real player audio file and you can hear the call. And because of this little funnel, I ended up building an email list of over 250,000 email addresses. And then the station was like, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, whoa. We should totally monetize this. Carlos, we need you to build our email campaigns, help us build these lists. And let's, let's just sell ads on these emails. So maybe I'm a big contributor to the whole, um, um, newsletter, uh, uh, strategy when it comes to emails. Um, but because of that, um, agents, uh, we had clients that, that like Coca-Cola universal Disney, they said, Hey, we just need someone to do the work for us. And I was the guy that already had the experience. So that led me basically to run all these campaigns for them because I already had a good head start before the technology became mainstream amongst all the other businesses. Now you fast forward to like basically 2015 and that's where a lot of this software became really affordable. So that way, no matter, even if you were just starting out as a business owner, you were able to do a lot of the things that the larger companies were normally only able to do. Um, and then since I already had the experience, I was able to hit the ground running. So now I, I, that's, that's exactly what I do now. I just, I help people. They tell me what their objectives are. I go ahead and I give them strategies. And then nine times out of 10, they'll say, Hey, that strategy looks cool. Carlos, can you just implement it for me? And then it's, that's it. It just leads me to implement for them. And that's it. Now I, I train people. I implement, I, I, I show them the way I coach, I, con I consult. And I, most importantly, I just have fun with all this geekery. I get paid to look at this technology, play with it and help people make money with it. That's basically the gist of it all. So that's my story about Fidel Castro. Fidel, I, I owe a lot to my digital career where I started getting paid because of that prank call. So that's my life. And, and today what I'm going to reveal to you guys is basically how I, after being, after doing this for quite some time, I'm going to reveal to you what a lot of these businesses are really doing, no matter what size you are. If you're able to incorporate these tactics and these strategies for your business or your client's business, you're going to see that it's a lot easier to build some winning campaigns that are likely to convert. So is that good to go? Um, give me, give me one if that's a good to go. So that way I make sure that we're still engaged and we're good to go because I have, I remember one time that I kept on talking and no one can hear me and I, I didn't even pay attention to the chat. Okay, cool. Yeah. I see a lot of ones. Awesome. We're getting more people. Steve with the thumbs up with the two thumbs up like that. All right. Awesome. All right. Good. So, um, one cool thing about this platform, um, I think that, that Tali, our, 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 uh, Elementor meetup, um, guru, she mentioned that I think we may be able to bring people on stage if it's possible. I don't, I don't know, but well, maybe we'll say that towards the end. However, if we can't, or even if we can, what will be really cool is that there's a Q and a section on the right hand side. If you, if a question comes up in your brain at that moment, I recommend you throw it in the Q&A and then what I'll do is that we'll spend some time uh, going through those questions so that way I can I can try to answer it myself although I'm the I'm the main speaker at the moment but Mike and I we've been doing this for a while so Mike Mike, Mike can help me answer these questions as well so go ahead and leave your questions in there good to go let me see are, are there any questions now no there are no questions all right good good good, good. all right so now what I want to start with is, let's see here. Let me go ahead and share my screen. 
I'm going to ask another question, uh, another question here, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit on a new plan. All right. So can, can, if you can, if you can see my screen, please give me a one in the chat. All right, cool. Awesome. Engagement is one seeing. All right. So this is a tool that I use. It still allows me to kind of just plan out my, um, my, my, my funnels, my, my maps. And then at the end of it, after I actually build these things out, this software allows me to put tracking codes on every funnel page that I build. So we're able to track the actual campaign performance. So this is like always how I like to start a lot of my strategies, a lot of my planning whenever I'm working with a client or even if, if I'm working on my own uh, company stuff. So what I want to do is, is whenever we build, um, a funnel or a campaign, a client usually comes up to me and they say, Hey, Carlos, man, uh, I've been doing, I've been in business for a while. We used to get a lot of word of mouth marketing, but now things are kind of just drying up and we, we want to, we know that online works. We, but we spent money on Facebook ads and it just didn't really work out. And I'm like, okay. And when I try to kind of just dissect what happened, they're like, um, yeah, we, we put like a hundred bucks into it. We, a, a boosted post and we were like, underwhelmed with the results we didn't get anything out of it so and then when i started kind of like do, digging in a little bit further the mistake that usually people make and they although they made the mistake but this is actually seen throughout across the board no matter if you are a veteran marketer or a, especially a brand new person i've seen this this common mistake happen and that is that everyone has this tendency to want to put out an ad and treat a like a facebook ad or any ad that they have very similar to what you would do with a billboard or a newspaper where you put out your special offer. Hey, Memorial Day weekend sale. We have a 35% off your Memorial Day weekend. We'll, we'll handle all your websites. Click here to, to uh, schedule a free consultation as if a free consultation is valuable nowadays. And the problem with that approach is that you're essentially, if you're someone that that is promoting any type of service to a bunch of people who don't know you, that's you're asking someone that that you don't know they don't know you they don't trust you but yet you're asking them to make a commitment to you although you haven't even proved or earned their trust all right if there's anything that i can compare that to that's a lot like asking someone to marry them on the first date uh, you know what if that's if that's like your mo when it comes to dating if that's your mo when it comes to finding the next your 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 spouse your, your next loved one Sure. That's your, what's the worst that can happen? Someone says, no, you move on and you go on to the next person. Hey, will you marry me? No, move on to the next one. But when it comes to business, every single no that we receive, that's just more money leaving our wallets, our accounts. All right. So if we're going to be successful, we have to find ways to minimize the amount of no's that we receive and try to go get more yeses. All right. Does that, does that make sense? Like whenever we build our campaigns, we have to find different ways to try to get more yeses that will eventually lead us to get that sale. All right. So in order for us to do that, all right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull this up right here. All right. This is one of my notes tools. And if we're going to be building any type of campaign, well, let me delete that and let me do this right here. If we're going to build any type of campaign, what we always want to do is we always have to understand that there are seven stages that every customer goes through. And as long as you know what stage they're in, you're going to have a better shot at writing messages that stick. You're going to write messages that are likely to make a connection with that person. And if you're, if you're able to make a connection, you're likely to get someone to take action. All right. And the first stage, and I'm going to, I want to go from the bottom to the top. The first stage that every customer goes through is called the suspect stage. And the suspect stage is the stage where someone is unaware that they have a problem, but they're always open to improving their current circumstances. However, they're not going to be ready for a pitch. So if you try to pitch someone that's at the suspect stage, then you're most likely going to get that no. All right. Then you have what's called your potential lead stage and your potential lead stage is essentially someone that realizes that they have a problem and now they're trying to figure out ways to solve their problem but they're trying to solve it on their own 
but they would be willing to share their contact information in exchange for answers to solving their own problem. So you can go ahead and, and pitch them, but they're still not going to be ready because they just want to try to solve the problem on their own, right? Then you have what's called a lead. A lead is someone that realizes not only that they have a problem, but you are someone that could potentially give them a solution, provide them a solution. Now, I, I always like to kind of make it, make it a point here. There's lead and there's potential lead. Whenever I hear marketers or, or salespeople say, hey, man, I could generate you a bunch of leads, I kind of cringe a bit because most of the time um, what they mean is that we just got you a big email list of people. We're just building you a list of people, but these people haven't expressed any interest in your services. So that's why I like to make a clear distinction between the difference between a lead and a potential lead. A potential lead gave you their email address, but they're not interested in your service. A lead is someone that wants to know more information about what you do. If, if a client hires me and I tell them, hey, I'm going to generate them leads, I want them to know that these are people that they can they should be they should be excited about contacting, not them picking up the phone and it's basically a cold call. That's why I like to make the distinction. So that's why a lead is someone that realizes you can help them with their problem and they'd be open to talking to you about their, your, your potential um, solutions. After that, you have what's called a potential buyer. A potential buyer is someone that understands what to do to get started. They understand what the process is. They're, we're just waiting for them to make that decision. So this is kind of like sending somebody the proposal so that way they can make that decision. We're just waiting for them to accept the proposal, right? Then you have what's called a buyer. Someone that says, yep, here's my money. Take it so that way you can solve my problems. Then you have what's called your repeat buyer. A repeat buyer is someone that you're helping them keep their problem solved or you're going to help them solve additional problems. And then you have a fan or an ambassador. A fan or ambassador is someone that is excited about you and or your brand and they're willing to share to others about how great you are. So as long as you know what stage they're in, you're going to have a better shot at building winning messages. And if you can create messages, messages that stick, you're likely to build some winning winning campaigns. Um, does that make sense? If you guys can go ahead and press one, if that makes sense. Uh, two, if if you have an issue, um, if you if you're not getting anything, I can, if you have a question, go ahead and throw it in there in the question. I'll make sure to answer these questions afterwards. All right, perfect. Now, now that you know your stages, all right. Now that you know what stage someone could potentially be in, the next important part is how do we move someone from stage to stage? But most importantly, how do we move them in a way where they feel like you're not selling them anything, but they feel like you're really trying to help them out? Because if there's anything I learned about marketing and sales is that everyone loves to buy. I mean, look at how look at Amazon success. Everyone loves to buy, but no one likes to feel sold. What they do like is they like to feel like they're discovering a great opportunity and because it makes sense they want to take advantage of it so that's the idea and if we're going to do that if we're going to help them feel that way to get them to buy more we have to have the right offers in place an offer is not necessarily just a product an offer is, so is something that someone receives in exchange for what we want them to do so an offer could be a combination of products or it could be uh, free items, but it's still something that they're going to receive in exchange for some type of action. And if you have the right offers in place, you're likely to move someone successfully from stage to stage. And the first offer that we're going to start with is for the suspect. And that's where we have what's called a lure. A lure is how we attract our suspects. Oops, I don't want to do that. It's how we, how we attract our suspects. Let me just center all these now right now a lure is kind of like um it's kind of like right before you go fishing if you go fishing you just throw out your fishing line you may catch a fish all right you may catch two fish but you're likely not to catch many fish and the reason why is because you don't know where the fish are at there's just no way i mean if you have like a uh i don't know if you're familiar with boats but there's like a little a, a, like a device called a loran where it can actually like detect where the fish are at right but not necessarily are they going to come up towards the to, towards you, towards the boat to eat your food, to, to be caught. So what you do is you throw out a bunch of fish food 
or a bunch of chum. And what will happen is that now the fish are going to start being attracted to you. Now you're going to have a higher chance of catching even more fish. So this is the same concept, but when it comes to marketing, the way we do this is in the form of um, blog articles, um, podcast episodes, um, and videos. It's usually something you give away for free in exchange for their attention. What's up, Tale? I see you there. What you're trying to do is you're trying to get the attention so that way we can start having them pay attention to what we have to say. All right? So the lure helps us attract our suspects. Okay? Now, once we have the lure in place, we caught their attention, then we have what's called the free irresistible offer. And the free irresistible offer is what we give away for free in exchange for their contact information. Usually it's their email address. Nowadays it's their phone number or at least having them opt in through like Facebook messenger or something. Right. And now this is like an ebook, a guide, a checklist, a blueprint, something higher of value. But my strategic approach is where I want to expose them to how they can start trying to solve their problem, but not give them enough to know what to do next. The only thing they can logically do is move on to the next step. Now, I don't want you to confuse this with just a regular free offer. Um, and the reason why is, I mean, you can create an ebook, you can create a guide, you can create a checklist. But the problem is that marketers, whenever we learn something new, we use it, we abuse it, and then we basically just ruin the entire strategy. People have caught on that, hey, oh man, I got an ebook. If you sign up for the ebook, you're most likely gonna get a ton of spam. So people are gonna be very hesitant to wanna give you their contact information because they do not want to be spammed left and right, okay? So that's why we have to make it irresistible. Now, how do you know if what you created is irresistible? Well, one of the easiest ways that I know that I've created something as irresistible is by answering yes to this following question. And if you can answer yes, then it's a, it's the then you know you have a higher shot that it's irresistible. And the question is, if I decided to put a price on this freebie, would people be willing to pay for it? If the answer is yes, then there you go. You have yourself an irresistible offer. If the answer is no, I'm not saying that it won't work, but you're more likely gonna get more no's before you get to that yes. So that's why we always wanna to try to make it as irresistible as possible. If you just created this little basic one pager that doesn't really solve much or do anything, you're gonna get a lot more, a lot lower conversion rate, all right? Then you have, after that, you have what's called your foot in the door offer. And your foot in the door offer is basically an offer that we use to get our foot virtually or physically in the door with that new, um, that new lead, that new person. Now, the idea is simple. There's two benefits for this one step. This, could, this is usually a, a paid product, a very low price product. And it's been statistically proven. Like you're not going to make, you, well, you may make your millions off your, this one product. It's a very low product. However, it's not designed to make you your millions. What it's designed to do is if you can get someone to buy from you once and they feel like they received a great amount of value, then what ends up happening is that they are likely to, by 60 to 70% that they're going to buy from you again. So this is just one way to speed up that buying behavior, that buying relationship. All right. Now the second benefit of this, this is like the secret sauce. All right. Is that if you can price this product correctly and if you're doing paid ads, usually what ends up happening is that if your first step is to get people to click to like check out your lure and then give you their email address. If it costs you $1 to acquire an email address, then what ends up happening if you're selling something for $7, that $7 sale can help you easily acquire six more people. So if you do it right, you can actually acquire customers at a profit. So the foot in the door offer is one of those under, what is it, under, under, uh, underrated steps, underrated offers that anyone ever can, can ever use. Everyone that looks to, likes to go straight to, for the kill, right? They usually skip this part, but this right here lets you basically crush the competition because your customers are helping you find more customers with their pocket, all right? You're no longer coming out of pocket to acquire more people, all right? So a foot in the door offer, the right one is gonna really, really help you out. After the foot in the door, you have what's called your gateway offer. And your gateway offer is the bridge between your lower priced items 
your lower price offers and your main offer. So this could be in the form of like a consultation call. Um, I, I, I don't like to call them consultation calls. I like to call them like strategy sessions or um, um, execution sessions, something that lets the, the person feel like even if they don't buy from you, they're going to receive, um, they're going to receive value. Hey, Mike, if you could throw that in the Q&A section, because I'll go through that question. That's a great question. He says, can you give us an example of a foot in the door offer? Mike, please put that in the Q&A. I want to make sure everything's working with the Q&A, man. I want to, I want to leverage the power of the secret, the secret meetup tool we're using. All right. I will. That's a good question. I'll give you guys some examples, uh, but I just don't want to forget. I don't want to, I don't want to miss it. So gateway offer is like a, a strategy session, an execution plan. But the idea is simple. I want to expose that person to what they can potentially have, how they, what they need to really achieve success. And then the next logical question that should lead to a sale is, do you want me to help you with that? And that leads them to the main offer. Main offer is exactly what we're trying to sell. That's our main product. That's our main service. That's the core flagship product that's going to help us keep the lights on in the building. All right. So that's what we're trying to sell ultimately, right? A lot of people, they do their ads straight to basically their gateway offer to the main offer. Look at how high up it is already on the, um, on the, on the offers um, list, right? After the main offer, you have what's called the profit booster. And the profit booster is exactly what the name says. It's, it's meant to help you boost profits. So that way you can um, increase your customer lifetime value. And then you have your referral loyalty offer. And the referral loyalty offer is, it, it, it could do one of two or both things. The referral component incentivizes your fans to help spread the word, all right, to do business with you. And the loyalty offer is it incentivizes your customers to help you stick around, to help them stick around, all right? So if you have the right offers in place for the right stages, you already increase your chances to build some winning campaigns. And this isn't something I just made up. This is actually something that after building several campaigns throughout the years, especially with these larger companies, this is literally the same, same process that a lot of other companies are using right now. And I, I'm happy to go through examples of how we can get this, um, uh, give you guys some of these examples uh, moving forward. But before I do, what I want to do is I want to kind of just show you how it all kind of comes together when it comes to building out your funnels. All right. For the most part, I know a lot of us are are like we're agencies. We're we're like either self self what is it solo solo agencies, and we also have small agencies. Um, but a lot of us we usually have some type of like appointment. Um, we have like an appointment process. Like right before someone buys from us, nine times out of ten, we need them to schedule a call with us so that way we can make sure we can do them do the do what they need. We send them a proposal. If they accept, we move forward. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a funnel, a funnel blueprint of how all of this would look. So that way we could get this going. All right. But before I go and do that, all right, I want to show you how I figure out what type of lure content. And you guys, this, this should probably come very natural to you guys, because if you guys are used to doing SEO, I'm going to show you what some of the things that I do to figure out what kind of lure content to create. All right. So um, how are we doing on time? Uh, okay, cool. We're, we're, we're good to go. So when it comes to lure content, all right, I see, I see a question show up here. All right, I see two questions. Perfect. All right, I'll go through those questions in a bit. So now when it comes to creating lure content, I don't like to reinvent the wheel. If I'm going to try to create something that's, that's going to attract my, my, my potential customers, I need to create content that I know it's likely to, to get their attention. And I don't want to waste time. So for this exercise, I like to go to um, uh, Google for this. So if you guys are already familiar with like doing keyword research, you know that if you start typing in, let's say for example, uh, um, uh, let's say websites. If you start typing in website or websites, let's just do website. All right. Google will start automatically giving you auto suggestions based off of what other people are doing, or what other people are, are typing in Google, right? So let me just put website here. And if you press enter, if you scroll down, let me zoom in a little bit because I know sometimes it's sort of a little hard to read. If you scroll down, you get this whole little people also ask area. And how can I create my own website for free? Where can I create a website? What is website explain? What are the four types of websites? There's four types of websites? Oh, there's 20. I, I, I thought 
I was I was gonna be uh, I thought I was gonna learn something new about four types of websites, but right here, this is literally Google showing you the questions that people are Googling based off of the word website, right? So if I'm gonna create lure content, I would rather create lure content answering one of these questions right here. So I don't want to waste time. Even listen, you're not going to be the first person to answer this question. You're not. However, you are still going to be original. You're still going to be you. So it's okay if you recreate something that's already been answered. And what's really neat about this, if you're doing video, which I always prefer video, is that YouTube, although, well, whatever, although you, you, you may, you may be already creating content for someone's creating an answer that someone has already answered. A lot of people want to see the latest version of what the answer is. So a, a quick little trick for that is, you know, how can I create my own website for free in 2021? Things like that. You're still, the, the answer is still pretty much the same. It's not really going to change too much. However, the fact that you put 2021 captures people's interest because they feel like they're receiving relevant content. Okay. So that's how I like to create my lower content. Now you, you could go ahead and copy this right here. Same question, paste it. And now we're going to get some follow-up questions. How can I create a website free of cost? How do I create a free website on Google? How can I build my own website? How can I create a personal website for free? Let's do business website. Business websites are right here. Which website is best for business? How do I create a website for, for my small business, right? Because this is your actual target audience. If you copy that, you paste that, and boom, you got more questions, all right? So this right here, if you're ever stuck trying to figure out what kind of lure content to create, just put the question right in here and let Google tell you what people want. And that's it. That's the easiest, that's the easiest way to come up with the right lure content. And let's see, am I lucky today? No, I'm not lucky with this website today, but I'm sure this website is up. If you go to answerthepublic.com and you type in here business website, change it to your country. I'm going to put US. That's where I'm at right now. Press search. And now what this website does, it kind of just, it, 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 it burrows into all the, the, the Google spiders and all, all the stuff out there to find all the webs to find out what kind of what kind of questions people are searching for. So if you want to save yourself some time, these are literally all the questions that Google's pulling up based off of business website, right? So you could just basically cherry pick the ones that make the most sense. So that way you can go ahead and create lure content that you know is likely to capture someone's attention. If you keep going down, you've got 40 prepositions right over here. Business website for Instagram, business website with email, business website. With, I know these questions are weird, but this is what people want answers to. This is what they're searching for. So you might as well let them realize what, what they're really looking for because people don't know what they don't know. So as an expert, you're going to go ahead and kind of just help them figure out what they're looking for, right? So this is really, really powerful. So that's how you know how you're going to create lore content that's going to work. All right. And there's a bunch of other plugins out there. If you're using any plugins out there, feel free to share them. Um, in the chat, and we'll, we'll go over to the plugins later down the road to find out different things. If you're already used to this with SEO, this is how you use it for lure content. Okay, so now when it comes to um, when it comes to uh, the free uh, the free irresistible offer, I think someone's asking how does the lure content lead to the free irresistible offer? Con uh, Connor, that's actually a great question, and and you know what, we can start going into the um, send. Uh, oh, well, I can't I can't send it. All right, so Connor, this actually does lead to the this part, right? And, and I can go, once I get to the FI, the, the foot in the door question, uh, I'll get to that part. To the foot in the door offer, I'll get to your question in a bit. But Connor, to answer your question, the way I like to do the lure to strategically move them to the free resistible offer is the lure exposes them to the problem while the free irresistible offer helps them to get started on solving the problem. So one of the easiest ways to do that is, hey, uh, let's say, um, the top, let's see here. Um, Google website, Google my business, let's see, you know, business card without website, business email is it important to have a good website for you. Okay. It, it, it important to have a good website for your business. I wonder if that's how they meant it. So what you do is, um, it important to have a good website for your business. The top 10 reasons to know if it's important if, to, if you, 
if you have a good website, if you need to have a good website for your business. So you can go ahead and, and create a video that says, if you are in the, in the medical industry, here's why you need to have a, a, a good website because of this. If you're an attorney, this, if you are a doctor or dentist, chiropractor, whatever, you can basically give out all these answers. And at the end of the lure, you're going to say, look, if you're really serious about creating a really good website, we've created this ultimate checklist and bundle pack to help you get started on how you're going to make sure you have a good website for your business. And now that leads them to the free resistible offer, right? It's a checklist. It's a bundle. I like to combine a bunch of different things to make it really, really attractive. Now, what do I create for that free resistible offer? All right. And for this one, I like to go to a little website called Amazon. You got it, Connor. So Amazon, great place to buy a ton of stuff. But if you really want to get some research, you go to books. Um, Amazon. Refresh. Let's see what happens. Okay. If you really want to do research, go to books. <laughs> All right. Build business website. All right. So now if you go here. You get to see all the books that Google, uh, Amazon is selling re regarding the topic, right? So let me see. Let me just go with the top ratings here. No Lowe's Guide to Sing. All right, the perfect conversion funnel. Hey, do I know that guy? No. Create a successful business website. First impressions matter. Okay, cool. So what I like to do is if, I, if you go inside of the book, nine times out of 10, if you are in the product area and the book loads, you go to look inside. And you're able to scroll to the table of contents. Wait, wait, wait. Did, I, did I miss it? Most of the time you're able to, unless I just skipped it. Yeah, oh, uh, most of the time. It looks like they, they, they don't let you do it in this one book. First pages. Most of the time you're able to see the table of contents. All right. Maybe, maybe this page, this book won't let me do it. But you're able to see what the table of contents has and what that lets you know is what the book is all about. And, and I'm not saying to copyright infringe because it's not necessary, but what I am telling you is that you can model your free irresistible offer based off of what's inside. There you go, look at that, that's one, one, one example here. Um, let's say website functionality and aesthetics, online and operating, okay? Uh, retail to e-tail. You can basically create like a bunch of little checklists that covers all these different check um, uh, chapters, right? And now you're able to create a free resistible offer that's likely to want people to give you their contact info, right? And remember that question, if I put a price on this, would someone pay me for it? The fact that people are spending $23.49 for this content proves that this is content worth paying for. All right. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Just leverage other people's research, their, their hard work to your advantage. Okay. So with that said, uh, um, I'll just go into the Q and a, uh, every real quick. Can you give us an example of a foot in the door offer? So Michael, to answer your question, and that's like, we're going to the next one with the foot in the door is if you are going with the website route, you're using the lure content to attract them. You're using your free irresistible offer to expose them to how they can get started. The foot in the door offer can be videos on how they can do it themselves. So for example, you can literally create video trainings on how to do a bunch of stuff. All right. If you're, if you're going to go on Wix, here's what you're going to do. If you're going to do GoDaddy, this is everything you got to do. If you're going to do on SiteGround, whatever, you can throw in a bunch of affiliate links in there as well. You create the video content so they can learn. But the real secret behind all of this is you give them so much information that they have, they, they're they like, oh my God, this is actually more work than I thought. Let me just go ahead and talk to Carlos because maybe if he's teaching this stuff, maybe he knows how to do it. How do I get in contact? And that's where you lead them to the next step, which is your gateway offer. Let's get on the phone. Let's let's look at, let's have a, a website development, a, 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 a online website strategy session. So that way I can tell you exactly what you're going to need and um, how you're going to get started. And if you decide to move forward with me, I'm more than happy to help you get started. And that's going to lead to a natural sale, right? Because you are they already know that it's going to be a bunch of work they don't want to do. They already know what the process is because they don't want to waste their time anymore. They try to do it themselves and they realize they don't have the time. Now they're going to move forward and say, yeah, Carlos, just go ahead take care of it. I don't have the time. I'd rather be a dentist. <laughs> I'd rather do my job than, than try to be a marketer. All right. And there's, there's my cat right there. She likes to Kind of just make sure that I'm working here. So come off deeps. Let me just, I need my keyboard though. I love you, but no. All right. So I went ahead and I live that. I answered that. Okay. Good to go. 
does that answer your question, Mike? Um, that we, I know we kind of, kind of skipped, but I wanted to just kind of keep it, keep it relevant to the, to the offers there. So, uh, yeah, cool. Awesome. So uh, what I like to do is uh, like, like I mentioned, lure attracts them, the free irresistible offer, expose them to how they can get started. The foot in the door offer gives them enough to let, Hey, Phoebe's your, your cat's name too. Cool. Phoebes. That's what I call her. Um, the, the foot in the door offer gives them instructions on what they need to do to move forward. And they'll pay seven bucks for some like little video set like that. It's nothing. Seven bucks is nothing. Nine dollars, whatever. I like seven bucks. That, that happens to be a price that people usually go with. All right. Gateway offer is your strategy call. Main offer is what you're selling. All right. So I don't need to go too far into that. All right. So with that said, let's kind of just put, put it all together as a, as a, as a blueprint. So let's map this all out. So right over here, when it comes to traffic, I personally love Facebook video ads. And I know that Facebook video, people don't go on Facebook to look for answers. However, they do go there to see their friends and family, to see what's going on, see whose birthday it is. But if they see an ad that's relevant to them, they will stop. Most likely they're going to stop and say, hmm, that's interesting. That's actually something that's interesting. They may pay attention to it. And because you're giving content that is interesting to them and people are consuming it on Facebook, Facebook rewards you with lower cost per acquisition, lower cost per, per um, action. Okay. So if I do a lure video and I tell video, hey, hey, Facebook, find me business owners that are interested in digital marketing, but are not marketers. And let them show, let them watch this video. So they go ahead, and at the end of the video, it says, "Hey, if you're really serious about building an important, good website, we put together this ultimate checklist to help you get started." All right. Now, oh, not not landing page. It's supposed to be opt-in page. All right. So they will be taken to an opt-in page, which will capture their name and email address, and then most of the time. A lot of people don't get the foot in the door offer ready to go. So, but they would be ready to have the appointments. And it's okay to skip a step. It's not, it's not usually easy to skip two steps in the offers. All right. So if you do a lure video to go to the opt-in page, after the opt-in page, they're going to be taken to a thank you page that confirms that we've received their information. And now we want them to check their inbox. But before they do, we want to go ahead and start pitching them that free good website strategy session. All right. And then that's going to sell them on the appointment. And now when they click on that link, they're going to go to our appointment system, which will then after they successfully book, they're going to be taken to the confirmation page, which confirms that the appointment has been set. So in a perfect world, someone's going to go right through and book on your calendar. But let's be real. That's not the way life works. We have to leverage the power of automation. So let's let's go ahead and we're going to go and make good on our promise. And we're going to deliver our email, deliver FIO, the free irresistible offer. And then from that email, they're going to be taken to a download page. And then from the download page, they can then access the freebie. And this is usually some type of like PDF document right over here. Let me just put a PDF icon here. This would be the file, the downloadable file. Downloadable file. All right, so now, they go ahead and you'll notice that you can't access this downloadable file unless you went through your email or through text. And I do that by design because I want to make sure that I'm getting good email address. I'm getting good information. If I don't get it, then what good does that do for me? So if you don't give me value, I guess I can't give you value in return. So this is how I keep my list honest. So yes, the only way you're going to access the file, but from that downloadable file, I'll go ahead and have a final page that says, Hey, don't forget if you're really serious about this, you should schedule a one-on-one -on -one strategy session with me so I can help you get started. So that links them to the um, the counter sales page, right? The counter sales page is just the information page that sells them on booking. The calendar page is the actual booking page where you embed the counter code, all right? Now, 
If they haven't booked, then let's leverage email automation to get them to book. All right. So I like to do things in threes. So I like to do like email number after I deliver the email the, that delivers the file. Email number two is a day later. Hey, yesterday you, uh, you downloaded the, the checklist. I, I want to make sure you got it. But most importantly, most of the time people are looking to get a good website as fast as possible. I like to schedule a free strategy session with you so I can help you get started. And now those emails are basically designed to remind them to push forward. And if they did push forward, email automations should be smart enough not to send them reminders. All right. I like to do that in threes. So email one, email two, email three. Um, it could be one day or two days in between each one. And then, of course, after they book, they're going to receive a confirmation email. And then reminder emails to show up to the meeting. Now, fun fact, I like to have I don't like to call any of my leads. I like them to call into my conference line because if they don't follow instructions, that's already letting me know that they're not going to follow instructions for, throughout our build outs. So if they don't fall, if they don't call, that's, hey, I, I consider it a loss. They, they're probably not going to work. I'm not going to be able to work with them. So I always tell them to dial into my Uber conference line and they do. And most of the time when they sign in and they go in there, they follow instructions, they're excited, they like the experience, and then they want to also like build it for themselves. They like that so that they, they, they like what you're doing. And they know that they like the fact that you're doing it. So they know you're experienced in that. All right. So these drive. Oh, Samsung is listening to my phone call. The, the CIA is listening to my conversation. All right. So this is confirm booking, confirm and confirm booking and reminders. All right. So that's, that's assuming that they actually went in from the first time they saw the video, but come on, let's be real. Most of the time they don't do that. So if they watch the video, but they didn't opt in, let's go ahead and retarget them. So this will be a retargeting ad to get people who watch. And the reason, one of the reasons why I love Facebook video is that you're able to retarget people who've watched 50% or more of a video. So if we do a retargeting ad, retargeting those who watched the the video 50 percent or more listen there's no question if you're spending that much time especially on the internet with all of the distractions out there if you're watching that much of a video you're in, you're interested in the content so i want to make sure i don't miss out on those people and just keep pushing them forward into my funnel all right and you notice i moved it to the left because sometimes i like to kind of just do also the same conversion ad but i like to do it as a cold ad as well same concept but try to get even more people in there because we may get conversions as well too. They call that. And that's how you start filling the top of your funnel with more people into the system. Man, my OCD. Oh man, look at that line. I'm not sleeping tonight, man. Look at these little lines here. All right, good to go. But that's it, man. That's how you, you're going to go ahead and build an automated, C, an automated system to kind of just keep pushing people forward into your funnel to get as many sales appointments as possible. Later down the road, when you get your foot in the door offer in place, you can go ahead and kind of just push this back a little bit and sell and sell your, your appointment. I'm sorry, sell your foot in the door offer. Okay. Order form. Where are you at? And when you sell your foot in the door offer, I like to bundle the strategy session as a bonus, as a part of the, the, the training as well. Plus, you're going to get a one-on-one -on -one strategy session with me so I can help you get started. And that helps you get more people. And once they do, they get to book on your calendar. All right. So I'll, I'll take this off for now, right over here and just make it link from the thank you page for now. And that's it. That's, that's essentially how you, you create the right messaging, know what stage you're in, use the right offers, and then how you build all the funnel components together. So that way you're likely to build some winning campaigns. All right, so good to go. Let's go to the Q&A section real quick. Uh, Michael, I think I answered that one. Good to go. Do you do a campaign for each offer to target people in different stages in the funnel? How do you approach this? Um, so do you do you do a campaign for each? Let's see, answer live. Oh, every time I click on answer live. Ah, ah when I click answer live, it disappears. Gotcha. Um, do you do a campaign for each offer to target people in different stages? Um, well, I don't do a different campaign. It's still a part of the campaign, but they're like, I guess, mini campaigns. If you if you want to call them that, 
because like, for example, lure video is designed to get people to watch a video, but then if they don't, if they watch the video, but don't actually opt in, then I do a retargeting ad. So that's as far as I go, but everything here is kind of just building on the previous step. So I'm trying to get people down the pipe here. So I don't build separate campaigns, like as far as like ads, but I do build like separate automation um, elements to push them to that next step. Okay. Um, Lucas says, what is this funnel tool? So this, this tool right here that I'm talking about that I'm using here for my mapping is actually a white label version of marketplan.io. They do have a free version. Um, I do have the agency version, which allows me to do the white label. But this, if you're going to be building out your campaigns, um, this tool really is helpful to get a visual roadmap on how you're going to put it all together. So market plan IO is very, very powerful. Um, will the design be available? Um, will the design be available right after? I, I think so, Mike, right? I think so. Yeah. I think so. I hopefully, hopefully it is. I, I we're, we're still figuring out this whole this whole meetup structure here. Yeah, I think we can um, send it out. Um, okay, cool, Michael. I think I answered your question. Why not give them the file in the email? Because I want to make sure. Okay, in the email, I, I never want to attach any document in an email because that takes up unnecessary space. I want them to rather click on a link that goes to like a Google Drive or an Amazon folder because that doesn't take my bandwidth from the email. Also. If I get them to land on a page, I can pixel them so I can retarget them based off of the different pages. If you don't get them to land on a specific page, then you're gonna, you, you, that's an opportunity you're missing because you don't get to pixel them on that event. All right. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, Lucas, you can't track. Yep. That's another great question. You can't track if he opens that as well. All right. Good to go. Lucas, smile. Uh, Carlos, tool. All right. I already answered that. How do you create a funnel without Facebook? All right, so I mean, so the funnel is the funnel pages, um, the landing pages, the automations in, in place, right? If you wanna change your traffic source, you could change it, you could use LinkedIn, you could use YouTube, you could use Instagram, you can use whatever traffic, if you're a public speaker, you can create a, a web domain that says free gift from carlos.com and tell them, hey, go to free gift from Carlos and automatically redirects them to your opt-in page. So you don't necessarily need Facebook. I just love Facebook because the cost per acquisition is a lot, is a lot lower. All right, Michael Nimmer. All right, Con Connor, sort of a random question. I want to sell hip hop instruments to rappers to rap over and offer them a some uh, offer them a some free instrumental as lead generation. I've seen someone offer a whopping 30 instrumentals, but they have audio watermarks that make them unusable and the main offers to get all the instrumentals without the watermark. The more common thing I've seen is offer say five instrumentals for free, but they're totally usable as is. And then the main offers, listen, um, that is something worth paying for, right? That's a great free irresistible offer. Um, I mean, giving that away as a bundle is, is, is a free irresistible offer in itself. If they're downloading that most of the time, you know, they may not want to talk to you at that moment. However, if you create like some foot in the door offers, some, some type of product that they can buy afterwards, Hey, why don't you join my membership, uh, my membership group and you could download X amount of, um, instrumentals a month so that way you can go ahead and build whatever beats you want and at least now that's a that's a membership continuity program that you can have for yourself even if they don't hire you for any custom work so giving them a small taste of what you can offer and then get into sign up for like a free trial for a, 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 a instrumental pool that's an that's a lot of way like for example like dj city when i was in my dj days and when i was working radio um these record pools um, we were able to access some good music and we just ended up signing up because it, all the music was great. And we didn't, we didn't, we always wanted to have the latest stuff. So that's how we can go ahead and do that. And then if they go ahead and hire you for, um, for, it, for custom work for the beats, Hey, you know, you got someone, not everyone's going to hire you because they don't always need it, but you might get sales. Hey, you may never want to get hired because you just create the beats up here and, and just sell them. I don't know. It's just one way to do it. So hopefully that, that helps. Good to go. Okay, we answered a ton of questions already. Awesome. All right, good to go. So any any other questions, throw them in the Q&A. Man, time flew, man. Shoot. Fast. The gab, man, the gab. All right, let me stop sharing real quick. Now it's just you and I. Hey, this is this ain't too hard. This this whole little platform's not too bad. No, it's actually pretty good. I like it. I like the uh, the easy visualization here, the Q&A, the chat here. It's good. Good stuff. 
Yeah, I like it. And, and I know that that Tali mentioned that after the the the, the session, was it we go to rooms to kind of just keep the conversation going? Is that what it was? I think we have the option. It looks like there's a room option up here. Um, so, yeah, it looks like we can. Got we'll it. For another day, though, definitely. We'll, we have a, another time. Yeah, we have time. We got to play with that. So, oh, oh snap. There, everyone, hey. everyone. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Sorry. Put your hands Hello. together. Hey, ni nice microphone. Hey, we got the same, <laughs> got the same one. one. I got the popper, too. Yeah. <laughs> the sound pop. What's hey, up, Tali? Uh, great. So, uh, hi everyone. Um, and just popping in, I'm uh, from the from a mentor community team, uh, working with Mike and Carlos um, uh, on a regular basis. So, I just wanted to uh, say thank you for uh, coming to this to our first meetup for marketers, which is not a um, so, uh, local meetup base and about the keeping the conversation going. So, we have actually uh, we launched a uh, community forum a few weeks ago. It's still in beta. It's still not officially launched. We will do that in uh, July. But you are like first um, from the first people that will see that. So you're welcome to join to the forum. This is a link directly to the marketing room, which is a room for marketers. Uh, so you can keep the conversation there, uh, add the topics, uh, and also discuss things that you learned today uh, on uh, during this event. Yeah, and by the way, Tali is in the she she gets all the intel. We try to get the secrets from Elementor's about to release stuff from her. So she's really good at keeping secrets, man, but we try. So you, she's straight from the, the the mouth of the horse's mouth right over there, man. She mm -hmm. all, got all the detail. So if she's uh, she's letting us into the beta, you know they're about to roll something out really big. <laughs> I just want to let you guys know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna put Carlos, awesome there. stuff today, man. I feel like I don't know about you, about everybody else here, but I've seen this before, and I still got some more gold nuggets. So, uh, <laughs> who, uh, everybody out there, if you got some gold nuggets from this, something you can use, put a one out there in the chat. Let us know. See some ones. There right. we go. Oh yeah, there it is. There you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I mean, I'm glad. I'm a marketer. I love all this geekery stuff, and and today is this. Tomorrow, let's see what marketers have force us to do like text messaging is really big now and that's why i like to combine texting inside of email messages as well and some of the software that i use um if you collect their email i do like voice drops as well hey i noticed you just downloaded my my, my free irresistible offer i wanted to make sure you got it if you could send me a quick text letting me know you got it that'd be great and people are like man you called me that was great man I, i'm sorry i missed your call i didn't even notice you called me i didn't call anybody it was just automation but that's like little things like that until marketers ruin it mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, until they ruin it. Yeah, exactly. Until they overuse it. <laughs> yep. Well, Carlos, awesome stuff today. Everybody, like Tali said, keep the conversation going. We've got the uh, link out there. I just posted it on the forum. We're going to be back next month on the 22nd, right, Carlos? June 22nd? June 22nd. Uh, cool. Yes, sir. Uh, topic to be announced, but we will post it out there soon. So we'll, it'll be some more marketing to help everybody. So keep if it it's who we think it is, if we, if we, if it is who we think it is, I'm telling you guys right now is going to be good. I'm telling you, I'm telling you it's going to be good. Okay, I'll let it be. Yep. All right, Mike. Cool. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks Carlos. Brother. Thanks, Tali. Thanks, Tali. everybody, for joining. See you next month. You got it, guys. Thank you.